it's Mariah Lisa with Mariah Shelley Village and today I am shooting this video to share our literature selections for grade 4 for the 2018-2019 school year. So just like I did with my 7th graders literature selection video, I'm going to go through um, the videos, I'm sorry, I'm going to go through the novels and give you the title and give you the author and highlight the major literary skills or activities that we'll be focusing on for that novel and then I'll show you the literature journal. Again, this is just our literature. I will shoot another video to go through everything that we'll be doing for our English language arts. Of course, you'll see our literature journal in that video, but I won't be going through it like I am in this video. Okay, so let's get started. To begin, we'll be in Australia and in the Pacific. So we're starting with Call It Courage, which is set in Polynesia. This is the only book that repeats from my grade 7 to um, my grade 4 literature selections. And that's for other reasons. But um, this particular son of mine is going to be working on reading comprehension and a new vocabulary method that I like to teach in grade four and I expect for them to be able to apply grades four, five, and six and then we move on to something more challenging once we get to grade seven. Okay, our next novel, nope, this is a novel, our next book is The Hundred Penny Box by Sharon Bell Mathis. This is a repeat in terms of my oldest read this book when he was also in grade four and we loved it we love 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 this book so my son will be working on comprehension reflection and theme with that particular book his next book is chopsticks from america which is what he's going to read when we um, study japan chopsticks from america is by elaine nagano um, when he reads this book, we're going to be studying three types of poetry. One of them is going to be hakus because hakus are Japanese poetry. And then he'll compare and contrast that style with the other two um, styles of poetry that he'll be learning about. Okay, we are going to move on to China. When we study China, he will be reading In the Year of the Boar and Jackie Robinson. This title is by Bet Lord. When he reads this book, we're going to be focusing on plot, cause and effect, fact and fiction, and then also comparing and contrasting the different cultures, so America and China. The next book that we're going to read is Tiger Boy, and we're going to read Tiger Boy when we study India. Tiger Boy is by Matali Perkins, and so far, I am I'm really liking this book. Um, it, it is set in India as well. When we read that book, he's going to be focusing on how to write a summary, going to be um, focusing on setting, and then he'll also be writing a commercial and shooting it for that particular book. All right, moving on, we are going to be reading The Wind in the Willows. So as you can see, every book that my fourth grader reading isn't directly related to a uh, a continent or to a nation. So there's certain nations that I'm like, yes, while your brother is reading this, we're going to choose a classic or a, just a traditional novel for him. And so that's what we're doing with The Wind in the Willows. And this is retold from the Kenneth Graham original. Okay, our next novel, when we are studying Israel, my fourth grader will be reading All of a Kind Family by Sydney Taylor. Um, we've read this book also with my oldest son when he was in fourth grade, and I really do like this book. Um, it's not set in Israel, it's set um, in New York City, but it is um, it has a lot of the customs and traditions that you will find in Israel with the family is Jewish. Um, and so I believe it's five girls, and I don't know, they are just a hoot. This book is really, really good. I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed the um, novel guide that we used with it, too, and I can't wait to use it again with my fourth grader. We will be um, studying figurative language. We'll be doing some cultural um, and time comparison with this particular novel and then we'll also be comparing um, like the biblical way that some of the things that we see in here are portrayed and are 
um, how it shows up in the text and then how it actually shows up in the in the book and just comparison the differences there okay moving along when we are in Ethiopia my youngest will have a book more so than a novel and it's called when I left my village by Maxine Rose Scher and I let me just read you a little piece I really like this book um, it says for Menelik and his family, Israel is as distant as paradise. Living high in the mountains of Ethiopia, working the land they will never own from sunup to sundown, their only solace is in the weekly celebration of the Shabbat. Okay, and then the new government comes, and that's where the plot thickens. I won't ruin the rest of the story for you, but um, this is a really good read. Um, and what's very interesting is the name of um, the main character, Menelik, is... Um, the name of the son of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And so, I mean, if you're familiar with Queen of Sheba, so she visits Israel, she meets Solomon, she heads back to her own um, homelands, and um, as the story goes, she goes um, back and then, you know, she has her son. So. The, her son would have been raised up according to her own custom and tradition, but nonetheless having a Israelite father. And so there's a lot of history and roots and even some biblical connections to be made just with the nation of Ethiopia in general. And this book does a good job on a child or in a child friendly way of addressing some of those historical and biblical issues. So we'll be reading that. All right, and then moving along, when we get to South Africa, he will be reading Journey to Joburg, A South African Story, and that is by Beverly Nadeau, or Nadu. Um, quaint and simple story. I really like it. Um, a brother and sister pair have to leave um, their village and travel to a big city in South Africa, I believe Johannesburg. Yes, um, travel there in order to get the assistance that they need for another sibling back in their home village. So he'll be reading this one. With this book, we'll do a traditional study guide that I put together for him. And then to end the year, we're going to be reading Charlotte Webb by E.B. White. I read this one. I've read a few of these now that I think of it. Jimmy to Joburg as well as, as Charlotte Webb um, with my oldest son too when he was in this um great so we're reading that with that book we'll be learning about themes characterization and we'll also do a book to film comparison because i will have him um watch the movie charlotte's web as well so i will i will link um my blog post to all of these books um in the description box so that you have it there as a reference or a guide if you want to um read what we're reading or see it on my on my blog and then also, like so, with my oldest son, I just created him a journal. And so a multicultural book studies journal. And I named his book studies instead of novel studies because he actually has some books, some novels. So I just named it book studies. He'll be reading 10 books slash novels. As you can see, they're all around here. And so most of them, like Call It Courage, Polynesia, um, the Hundred Penny Box is African American Interest. Chopsticks from America is Japan. In the Year of the Boar and Jackie Robinson is for China. Tiger Boy is for India. I'm trying to quickly give them to you. The Wind and the Willows is just a classic slash adventure. All in a Kind Family, Israel slash NYC. When I Left My Village, Ethiopia. Journey to Joburg, South Africa. And then we're ending with Charlotte Webb, which is also a classic. Okay? So if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment or you can also like, share, subscribe. Until next time, shalom.